Hey everybody, I'm Matt. This is the second ever Nerds Domain podcast. Uh, I'm here with Johnny today. Hello. Say hi. Uh, and we're going to do an interview with Chris Birch of Modifius Games. Uh, Chris and Modifius are putting it together or have together a Kickstarter for their new a new product line they've got coming out. Uh, looks all really good. You can check that out on uh, Kickstarter. I'm sure Chris will give us kind of a better uh, run through of that. But uh, today we're just going to interview him and talk to him about his product and what all is going on with Modifius and what we can expect in the future. So, um, Chris. Hey. Um, I know we tried this once before. Let's try it again. Uh, I am actually recording this time for sure. So, uh, in the impending po- zombie apocalypse, uh, your weapon of choice? Is going to be a cricket bat, since I'm English. Yes, yes. <laughs> Although we did have a, uh, a shotgun factory down the road, which is quite unusual for um, England, as most people will know. And, uh, uh, and it turns out we had a, an arms dealer in the floor below an old office that used to be in a few years back. And they had all kinds of goodies. We once opened the lift door and there was a box of Semtex there. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. So um, the, the police loved us if ever the alarms went off because we'd have like armed cars turn up freaking out thinking that some terrorists are about to bust out of there. Right on. Well, that sounds, that sounds exciting. Uh, it sounds like you guys were ready there for a little while. Yeah, hell yeah. So, um, so second question, um, given all of the sci-fi that you know, and really dig deep if you want to, uh, what planet do you most want to visit? Oh, it's got to be um, Edgar Rice Burroughs' Barsoom. Ooh, yes. Beautiful, elegant, ancient cities turning into dust and stunning sky galleons sailing around the sort of uh, beautiful crystalline cities of the Martians. I think that would be pretty awesome. And you get superpowers. Hell yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) All right. Well, um, I'm going to hand it over to Johnny. He's got some questions, and uh, we'll talk through whatever's going on. And, uh, Johnny, you go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, uh, once again, thanks for uh, joining us, Chris. Uh, uh, Really, you're going to be the best person to uh, pitch this idea to our listeners. So we'll just start with uh, giving you the chance to sell your project. Uh, So in your own words, what is Octum Cthulhu? I think Cthulhu is basically World War II with tentacles. <laughs> so we've taken the amazing and incredible period that's World War II and packed it full of Cthulhu villainy and also um, uh, the kind of crazy Nazi war machines, the insane mythological uh, plots that, that everyone thinks they were working on. Um, uh, we've, you know, we've called it sort of Acton Cthulhu, the secret war. So it's Acton Cthulhu is all about the secret war that was fought so that the history books could be written as they were. And it's all about the desperate tales of heroes and heroines across the whole world trying to hold back the the darker plans of the Nazis as well as Cthulhu and his minions who really didn't care, you know, they weren't really on anyone's side because we were being evil enough to each other, but they were taking advantage of of the madness and the confusion to further their own goals. So, you know, the Allies really had it tough in our secret war because they were, you know, they were fighting the Nazis and Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah, that would have been uh, quite horrible. So that's that's a really cool concept. Um, I was lucky enough to get a review copy of Three King Zero Point Part One ah, right. last yeah. last yeah. year. You, yeah. uh, you contacted me. Let me check that out. Uh, unfortunately, I still haven't gotten to actually play through it. Uh, our schedules just aren't match, uh, matching up very well over here. Um, but uh, that that is the that was the first chapter of your entire project, Octon Cthulhu. Correct? It's, uh, uh, well, yes, basically. Um, Sarah Newton came to us with the Zero Point campaign, which is one campaign story set within the Acton Cthulhu universe. And we also have, and we've had two two installments of that, of which there's about eight. And um, we've also got another campaign 
called Shadows of Atlantis. And mm -hmm. then and that is has been part of a Kickstarter. Um, so we funded two thirds of that of the stretch goals. And we've also got the Assault on the Mountains of Madness campaign. And we've also got what's called the Adventure Series, which is just a whole series of different kind of adventures that are scattered all over the planet. Nice. Uh, and lots more. So it, it's there, you know, Zero Point it's kind of was the beginning of uh, Acton Cthulhu and has, has sort of set the scene and got the storyline rolling. And uh, it's just rapidly expanding as we go. Right. Yeah. Um, how long have you been working on this project? It's it's huge. So I just I'm. I'm curious how long you've been working on it. Um, probably, I mean, it started, the idea started a few years ago when we were doing Legends of Anglaire, and, and actually I was chatting to Sarah Newton then about um, doing a Weird War uh, Fate game, and, and of course it's one of those ideas you have as writers go, wouldn't it be great to do this and that, and, and then you go, actually we better finish the book we're doing first. <laughs> And, yeah. um, but it was always bouncing around. I, I play a lot of Flames of War, the miniatures game. Um, me and the guys that were playing that always wanted to throw in some zombies or some giant creatures. And, you know, we're thinking, wouldn't it be cool to do a, a supplement for that? And then we just started playing around with the ideas and Cthulhu. And Sarah said, look, I've got these adventures, that, you know, the campaign idea for Zero Point. And, you know, we just started rocking and rolling with Acting Cthulhu and, and got it and got it up and running. And it's and it's just grown from there. And I've been wanting to do the core setting books as soon as possible because we've got so many people pitching us ideas for stories and adventures that I realized we really needed to sort of set the foundations so people knew what was Acting Cthulhu and what wasn't. You know, we're not Weird War. We are very much laser focused on the you know the Cthulhu influence in a World War Two story yeah. and so with that that's quite a fine line to tread sometimes and of course you end up with some zombies because you know who doesn't love a bunch of zombies in a story now and again but you've got to be careful totally. yeah you've got to be careful you don't fall into the trap of it always being some zom some zombies or werewolves or what you know or vampires and that's that's a great story but what I love is the fact that the Cthulhu storyline has this much deeper and darker plot running through it. And we've got six heroes that we feature in a lot of our, they're going to be miniatures, they're going to be in a lot of the fiction, they're going to be featured in a lot of the books. And there is this big plot running all the way through our books that is going to come to a big climatic end. And um, so you can follow the sto their story, a bit like Lord of the Rings. You can follow the story yes. of, the, of the kind of main characters or you can go off and do your own thing, which is kind of what the One Ring does. It's, you know, yeah, OK, Frodo and Bilbo and that lot are all going to have their adventures one day, but go and have your own adventures in that cool world. So, Sure. Yeah, that's I mean, that sounds amazing. So the so the players are always going to have the option of either your pre-generated characters and their adventure or, or they'll have enough supplements to go run their own ideas is that is that what you're yeah i mean we yeah because i know everyone likes being given adventures that you know there's plenty of gms and keepers that know exactly what they're doing and they've got their own ideas so the setting guides are really there to give them all the nuts and bolts to get on with that and uh, create their own uh, worlds or their own version of Action Cthulhu and a lot of people don't have the time or just they like having it all given to them so that's why all the campaigns are there so we're trying to give everyone who's interested in playing in our world the means to do it and that also stretches to the idea of having different rural systems so not everyone wants the dark dangerous world of Call of Cthulhu some people want to be able to go in with a Tommy gun in both hands and figure that they're probably going to come out the other end. They want to be able to take on the Elder Gods. They want to be able to take on Shoggoths. And that's what Savage Worlds is about. But you can play it darker. But Savage Worlds is very gung-ho, very pulpy, whereas the Call of Cthulhu side of it is this isn't really about combat because if you start you know, running around with people with, with machine guns in Call of Cthulhu, you're going to end up dead pretty quick and not just from a tentacle, you know. So. Yeah. Um, the, the level of production on this project looks amazing i mean the artwork and the in the in the artwork the, is beautiful yeah and just the zero point alone was amazing um like Thank how you. did you manage to to pull that off like well i've been i mean i've been doing um 
uh, kind of art direction for a few years now and doing flyers for events and and t-shirts and and I've always known that if you get great artwork that's half the battle if you get great design that's you know the other half of the battle and obviously then the story but getting Mikhail Cross um, as our as our designer he just totally got the look spot on uh, Dim Martin our artist uh, I found him uh, looking through some artists and he had done this sort of some cool sort of weird war uh, planes uh, for World War Two and he again he just totally got this concept of it being um propaganda style posters and a graphic novel look and being quite dark and we've just been rolling with it since and we've not i've never had to tell him to now change that artwork it doesn't work you know it's we've always just kind of rolled through it and it's it's just been this great team and uh and, and now we're growing this team with more writers and for the kickstarter project we've tried to find writers not necessarily the biggest names, people who had already published works so we knew they could deliver, but people who genuinely loved World War II and had stories that, you know, like, they go, oh, well, I know this thing, there's this great story about this battle or this raid, or did you know about this, this secret group? And they actually had a passion for it because I knew that if you can bring out all the hidden stories about World War II, and trust me, the stuff that went on is weirder than you can possibly, you know, write as a, as a script. Yeah, it, I've heard There is stories. so much amazing. And there's so many incredible heroes that did stuff that you, you'd think would be crazy in a role-playing game, you know, that, and they actually did it, you know. So and that's what we want to try and do is bring out some of those stories. And, and I'm quite passionate about, I love World War II, but I know not, not everyone loves historical stuff like that. But you add in a few monsters and suddenly it becomes this cool project. And what, what we're hoping to do is um, there's going to be a couple of, you know, a few pages of great museums and memorials you can visit if you're interested in finding out what happened. And maybe some people are going to go, oh, well, you know, my dad was in the, you know, in the British Army or my dad was, you know, maybe he was in the Airborne. And maybe I should, you know, or your granddad, maybe you should check out. Uh, a bit more about you know what they got up to because suddenly you, you're interested in it I think that would be great as well yeah that, that's definitely something like uh, I wasn't in the World War II until I heard a few personal stories uh, my dad told me so and then when you blended it with Cthulhu like it was an immediate eye catcher for me um, so I'm, I'm right there with you um, now let's uh, let's talk about the Kickstarter itself for a moment you yeah uh, You've, uh, I believe I read somewhere on the uh, an interview you did, or maybe an article that was written about it, I forget now, um, you funded the initial uh, goal in like a little over a day. Yeah, it was 26 hours. I that's, didn't, that's amazing. I had no idea we were going to do yeah. it that quick. Yeah. Are you, Chris, are you, are you aware of your percentage over right now? Uh, right now? <laughs> when we were, lo- when I was logging in and looking at, um, the Kickstarter page today, you're at 555%. That's yeah, that's right. So that's Pretty that's crazy. amazing that you're that far over. And and have you you guys started just a few days ago, didn't you? Or was that a full uh, month? No, about, actually about, yeah, about three weeks. So we're about um, halfway through the, the okay. campaign. We had finished eight, April 2nd. And... Um, uh, it's yeah, it was it was quite a shot. I, I kind of figured we'd probably get there, but I didn't think it would be happen so quickly. And uh, you know, we had a lot of stretch goals lined up just in case, but we've been kind of scrambling to do more. And I think one of the things that's helped us is we we spent about three months talking about it, telling our fans, asking them questions. So one of the big things we did a couple of surveys and we said what do you want from the stretch goals? What do you want from the add-ons? And for example, one of the things we learned was that, you know, kind of t-shirts and bags and all those things are nice, but people really wanted more content. And yes. they, and, and then once we got going, we said, well, actually, okay, you want more content, but do you want more setting guides or do you want more adventures? And then the, it, overwhelmingly it was more adventures. So we kind of rejigged our stretch goals to be to bring forward some of the campaigns and uh and that just worked you know we had a surge in funding and i think a lot of kickstarter people a lot of project leaders they think they know what they what people want but you actually really have to talk to your fans and and 
do some solid research and, and actually just see what it is they actually want from you. And and it's you know it's been brilliant because our thirty five pounds pledge level, uh, which is all the PDFs, it was called I think PDF Master Bonus level, basically gets you every stretch goal in PDF that we unlock. So it's it's getting more and more of a silly deal because um, you know I think so far. Uh, you know, we've unlocked the Eastern Front Guide, the North African Guide. There's obviously the two core books. We're about to um, unlock the second half of the Mountains of Madness campaign, and we've unlocked the second half of the Shadows of Atlantis campaign. So, um, and you know, they'll all get unlocked. So, people are going to end up with the two core books and several setting guides and several campaigns just for that sort of small pledge which is brilliant i think i love get, giving people loads of value for money oh yeah that's that's one thing that i felt when i read your uh kickstarter is the value that the pledgers get is is amazing compared to other things that i've i've considered backing um in the past yours just blows them all out of the water um full of value and content um so would you say that's like the the biggest piece of advice you could give on kickstarter is to uh, talk to your audience and find out what it is they want from you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just because they want to tell you as well. And as long as you, you structure your, your questions in a way that you get, you know, information that you can actually use. And it's just, you know, it's, it's don't be afraid to find out because I think a lot of people think they know what people want. And it's often it's because you want to do it. And you've got to take a right. step back and go, I know I want to do a load of miniatures, but do do the fans want the miniatures? Or I, I know I want to do a comic book, but actually would they prefer another set of adventures? And um, it's just, you know, it's just so important. And it will help your, your business going forward because you're going to get more backers. They're going to pledge higher and faster. And, you're, you're, you know, and if you get, you get to the higher levels, you can start doing anything you want because everyone's on board anyway by right. then. So uh, I just... You think it's it's really missing, and so we we did all that research. We actually were going to do a miniatures Kickstarter to start with, and then I realised that it was more important to get the core books done sooner rather than later. And we could do the miniatures later on, and we, and it looks like we're probably going to bring them in at the tail end of this Kickstarter if things go well. And so we we kind of changed that around. We did another questionnaire, and we've probably done about three questionnaires, and have a fourth one running about the miniatures again asking people what they want to want as creatures and heroes and things so um that all helped and we did a lot of pr we you know we we individually emailed a lot of our fans we individually emailed a lot of the press contacts and that's everyone whether they've got a tiny blog podcast or a really big <laughs> gaming site we emailed everyone and said hey guys look this is what we're doing and hope you well and can you you know can you give us a hand and I'm a big believer in asking for help, you know, from everyone. And, yeah. um, you know, everyone likes to help out. And that, that paid off because we've got so many people talking about us and, and you know, so much help from people and love and support that it gave us that big boost. And, and then it's just, you know, you get on a bit of a roll. And, uh, and as a result, we've been able to unlock all these cool new rewards. Right. Yeah, that's... Uh... It's definitely worked out well for you, and I, uh, congratulations on that. I know I was I love miniatures, uh, especially non fantasy miniatures. Uh, so I was I was looking forward to to that when I heard about it. Um, but you think maybe that'll be part two or sometime down the road uh, before we get to see anything like that? What we're what we're thinking of is. Um, well, we've got the, the main kind of adventures and, and setting guides we want to finish um, in the next set of stretch goals. And then we've, we were working on some miniatures with a company called Clockwork Goblin Miniatures, and they do a lot of 15 mil Weird War II miniatures. Uh, but they actually start at 28 mil to scale down, funnily enough, to get the, the best quality. And we had a, a particular range of ideas. And I don't think we're going to be funding a whole, this isn't a whole miniatures collection we're going to be funding, but what we're hoping that we will do is be able to fund the sort of these six heroes that are the focus of our storyline. And we've got, we're going to do those as a set 
I'm going to unlock and then you'll be able to add those in as a pledge level as a sorry as an add-on and then we've got we're, we're kind of reimagining some of the kind of classic Cthulhu creatures um, and there'll be some concepts and, and CGI sculpts coming out um, once we're ready so we're kind of beavering away trying to get as many ready to, to show off as possible and um, uh, and, and you know then hopefully we'll you know we'll be able to you know, pull in a lot of uh, miniatures fans. Because, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to get, uh, you know, a small collection together. And then, you know, we'll release more in time. But, you know, you can't do everything. That's another thing. You've got to be careful not, not to chew off more than you can, you know, you cope with. But um, we've got a great team on the miniature side. Uh, so that will be another, like a whole other group of people working on that to kind of, you know, bring it out. And uh, we've also got a really big artist who will be working on some tiles, like really cool uh, miniatures tiles, which I can't talk too much about yet. But again, we'll be announcing that in a in a week or two's time. And that is going to be this beautiful themed set of, of tiles to recreate some of the adventures as well. That's that sounds amazing. Um... That's yeah, that's great. Uh, so, are there are there any future projects that you are looking at, or is is Octon Cthulhu just taking up all your time? What 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 do we have to look forward to? Wow, uh, well, from your company. Our other, our other big project is Mutant Chronicles, which was the big gaming uh, kind of sci-fi brand in the '90s that was um, up against Games Workshop. And um, I don't know if you remember it. It was uh, this kind of real gonzo te- techno fantasy, sort of diesel punk vibe. Uh, massive shoulder pads, huge guns, um, kind of various corporations fighting each other, and the Dark Legion pouring forth from the tenth planet. And uh, there were like video games and card games, the card game Doom Trooper, and board games and uh, the role-playing game and Warzone, the miniatures game, which is being rebooted on Kickstarter at the moment, actually. Uh, So we're rebooting the third edition of the role-playing game. So that's going to be a big launch later this year, kind of around September time. And we're doing a big announcement about that soon and revealing the logo. And uh, we've been kind of rewriting some of the story. And uh, so those are our kind of two main things. We've got some little other beautiful projects bubbling away. The same artist that is doing our Mountains of Madness artwork, a guy called Karang from uh, Japan, who I was imagine saying it, Karang, like kind of with a big spear in your hand, standing on a <laughs> smoky mountain with monks poised to kick ass around you. Um, so he's done this. He's been doing all this beautiful Mountains of Madness art for us. And he's also done this very, very cool uh, Halo-style, neon-coloured uh, anime post-apocalyptic imagery. And uh, we've got a storyline called Of Dreams and Machines, which is this kind of science romance set in the far future after a big collapse. And you've it's, um, it's kind of Gamma World meets anime... You know, it's it's, but it's got that sort of um, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Barsoom, science romance vibe to it. Um, uh, so we're, we're going to have a lot of fun with that, and we're we're using the Apocalypse World engine for it. So that's nice. um, yeah. that's that's what I do to take my mind off uh, acting Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we have our little playtest session with some friends, and we're we're currently playtesting the um, the campaign at the moment. So. Very nice. Yeah, I, I don't know how I missed that back in the day. Uh, that looks that looks like something else that's right up my alley. But you know, I'm up for anything gaming related. So um, right. we'll look forward to that. That's that's exciting. Um, yeah, awesome. It's yeah, we've got some. We've got a really good team. So we're kind of we've we've got a lot of a lot, a lot of, sort of projects bubbling along. And but you know, acting Cthulhu is obviously the main one with the Kickstarter. Now we've got a lot. A lot to deliver now and we've got a great team yeah. who are working on it and what we're also not doing is making the core books bigger as the the stretch goals get bigger because i've seen from other you know stretch uh, kickstarters is as you know the project gets bigger so the the time to deliver it goes gets later and later and later so we're aiming to still deliver those core books the investigator's guide and keeper's guide um you know on time 
And then the other books will just gradually follow and we'll get as many out as we can. But there'll be, you know, the Mountains of Madness campaign is probably early 2014 and it's a different team of people. So it's, you know, it's um, it means no one's going to, you know, you haven't got this sort of uh, train wreck of a, of a writing project about to happen where, um, you know, someone gets ill or someone decides that they don't want to do it anymore. And, you know, you, you, the whole thing is a disaster. So we've been planned quite carefully to make sure we can deliver everything we promise. So that, and I, that's probably a good idea. You don't want to promise things and then fall short of that. That'll, yeah. That'll piss yeah, people exactly. off. So, so yeah, probably definitely. a good thing. Um, yeah. well, uh, Hey Chris, I've got I've got a question if you don't mind. Sure. Um, where can we see you guys at this year? Will your company be making its round to any of the conventions? I know we're here in Indianapolis with Gen Con, so. Oh yeah, well we'll definitely be in, at uh, Gen Con. Uh, we're going to be sharing a booth with Chronicle City, uh, who are our kind of print partner, which is a guy called Angus Abranson, um, and. Um, a lot of projects he's working on. We're also going to be at the UK Games Expo um, coming up in the spring in uh, Birmingham in the UK. And, uh, you know, where possible, we're going to make appearances at other events or find some find some Cthulhu minions to uh, take our place wherever we can. So, Excellent. Uh, well, I hopefully we'll get to stop and talk to you guys and see you when you guys get to Indy. Oh, definitely, yeah. All of this looks great, and I can only imagine the rest of what's going to come out is going to look like. For sure, yeah. I'd love for you to see the uh, all the artwork that's coming through, and uh, um, you know, well, fingers crossed, we'll have you know some of the first fruits to share, you know, with everyone who's backed us and fans at, at the event as well, and got a few surprises up our sleeve as well. All right, Johnny, do you have any more questions? Uh, no, that that pretty much covered everything I had. Uh... Chris, was there anything else you wanted to add that we maybe didn't cover? No, uh, I mean, I guess you'll you'll put the link to the Kickstarter in the... Um, oh, of course. Yeah. The- well, actually, uh, I went ahead and made a tiny URL for that. Okay, uh, it's cool. tinyurl.com slash octungkick. Cool. A-C-H-T-U-N-G-K-I-C-K. So Excellent. just to make it a little easier because uh, links in Kickstarter can be kind of yeah. long. Yeah, I know. So, That's right. So, yeah. Um, well, Chris, uh, thanks for giving us your time and letting us know all about this great project. Oh, no problem. Um, and we will. Uh, yeah, I, I'm all but sold to get in on this Printmaster set, where I get all of the, I get the two core books uh, printed, and then everything else on PDF because that looks yeah kind of up my alley. My eye on that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so towards the end, we'll we'll add in some kind of other pledges that give you the core books and the campaigns or the core books and, the, and all the settings. We've got the Pacific Guide to launch next and um, and they're all got amazing art. We've got loads of add-ons like kind of wall prints, canvas wall prints and um, just stuff that kind of fits with it rather than I'm, I'm a, trying to avoid doing t-shirts and I've look, I've costed that dice but I just think um, uh, you know I'm trying to really focus on the content because the more content we fund the more people get. Uh, yeah, for free yeah. actually. So it just makes it even better, I think. And the, the miniatures is the one thing I kind of want to do, but I'm leaving it until we're, we've pretty much funded the the obvious books. And I don't want to just start funding random books for the sake of it. It's I'd rather yeah. get to the point and go, okay, now we're gonna have some fun, guys, and just fund some really awesome miniatures. And then you know you get you, you can decide to buy those if you want or um you know and 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 Nat, this is really the chance for us to kind of make a bit of fat at the end just in case because I know there'll be some there's always going to be hidden costs oh yeah yeah uh, uh, so that's one thing we've got to be a bit careful about you know it's why our shipping's a little bit more expensive but it's I know I know one Kickstarter I think got hit with about nine ten thousand pounds worth of shipping that I haven't figured on. Oh yeah. Wow. So it's, you've got to be so careful. Um, and uh, I mean, I think we planned relatively well, but you just there's you know what these as soon as you start talking tens of thousands of pounds, one little error could could mean five oh, grand. You know, and, oh yeah, yeah. You know, so um, uh, you know we just got to be really careful. You know, and you know we've, it's a real honour to have so many people back us and say your idea is cool. So, <laughs> It's uh, it's brilliant, you know. Well, I had a couple more votes to that. 
uh, that list. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We will definitely. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We will definitely be getting this up on the website uh, probably uh, the ninth. So sure. this coming Saturday. If you want to, to get the catch up again once we've got the miniatures out. Um, cause oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've still um, got, um, four weeks to go actually. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't let my girlfriend know about the miniatures because she'll fund your uh, Kickstarter all by herself. I really okay. <laughs> you see, that's that's my my hope is that we'll actually then tap into a whole new audience if we get enough. I'm I'm hoping we get six the six heroes, six Nazi villains, six Cthulhu creatures. We've got an awesome Mego, a deep one. Um, I think a Migo variant, like with a Nazi bo- a Nazi officer's body stapled to his front. <laughs> oh, nice, very nice. Uh, yeah. that sounds and, cool. Uh, and they look—I mean, they look. The concepts look beautiful. I mean, really beautiful. And if we get far enough, um, we're going to have some Arctic U.S. expedition troopers and Arctic uh, German troopers as well, because the idea is to set the kind of miniatures. Uh, escapades in the uh, mountains of madness. So, oh yeah, yeah. So, okay. and then we've got later on down the line. Next year will be our big, big finale. We've got a big sequel planned to Act in Cthulhu. So, but we've got to play out some of the adventures and storylines yet. So, well, excellent. I'm I'm looking forward to, forward to it for sure, and uh, I'd Thanks, be guys. happy to promote it as much as we can because it looks like it. <laughs> It looks like the production quality is really, really, really high, and yeah. that's one of one of my big com- concerns about Kickstarter is sometimes you just don't get to see anything, yeah. and they assure you that it's going to look good, but yeah. you have plastered pictures all over this Kickstarter, and they all look gorgeous. Yeah, that's just, what I thought. Well, I'm actually looking at the, did you the front of the keepers the back guide. Of the, oh, sorry. Did you oh, ever look right. at the back um, of the uh, Zero Point PDF? Uh... uh there's a there's no. a file folder. It's, it's like I could print this out and hand it to you players in a Manila folder, and it would look like a mission statement that you would get as a soldier. Oh uh, yeah, like yeah. that just oh, that excellent. floored me when I saw it. I was like, that's that's good stuff right there, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the cup for the uh, keeper's guide, and it look Johnny. Correct me if I'm wrong. Does that not look like Steam Boy just a little bit? Um, <laughs> I'm not seeing. And I, where am I? Where are you at? Is that, um, uh, well, oh, it's also the, the very, yeah. very beginning of the yeah of the video. Oh yeah, it, the, it, the artwork. It has that same feel to it, and I love the look of the, the investigators guy. That that yeah. uh, that's all it's actually amazing. A I love it. Artist I found, and um, he he'd actually drawn that cover with a variant for a board game magazine before, and the table was covered in kind of classic board games. So I got him to change it to all the acts from Cthulhu, like our first book cover and the map of Europe and a plane and some cool stuff. And it just fitted so well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because we've, I mean, those, and she's one of the heroes. Uh, she's one of the, she's this French um, resistance uh, agent who has had an encounter with some freakish uh, Cthuloid creature, which now has got this kind of weird symbiotic relationship with her. She's freaking scared of it, of course, but it, for some reason it seems to like her because she likes killing Nazi officers. So as long as she feeds it Nazi officers, to, um, uh, it's quite happy. But she's a bit worried what, what happens when the war ends. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and we've got, you know, with the Professor miniature you might have seen on our site is kind of based on the kind of Perseus idea with the Medusa's head, you know, with this Amigo head and reading a spell uh, out. And uh, so all the, all the kind of characters are going to be in these really kind of full on heroic poses. So we're going all out to, you know, um, make these kind of really, really awesome characters. And, and the what we're doing as well is each block each um thing each set of characters we unlock each set of miniatures is going to come with the fiction for the miniatures so the people who aren't into, oh, the, cool. into the miniatures will still get something at the same time as well yeah i'd like that too that sounds great yeah all right well um all right yeah chris again thank you very much uh and you're with modifius entertainment yeah um and we uh 
can't uh, stress enough to our listeners that this is something you should at least go look at for the uh, the beautiful art and uh, consider consider backing. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, thanks again, and uh, hopefully we'll see you come August. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.